Good evening, welcome to my laboratory. Um, I'm astounded by the fact that there still seems to be this continuing misconception about the nature and relationship of the uh, basic electrical quantities of voltage, current, resistance, and power. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a demonstration here um, that hopefully will address some of those misconceptions. Now, Ohm's Law is a set of interlocking definitions. Okay, I'll show this uh, in a still. Uh, and, but Ohm's Law is a set of definitions. It mutually defines voltage, current, resistance, and power algebraically in terms of one another. Okay, but the key is to think about what these quantities are. Voltage is fundamental. It's charge pressure. Voltage comes from sticking a whole bunch of mutually repellent charges into a small space, so they try to push each other apart, or try to go from concentrations of charge, great concentrations of charge, to lesser concentrations of charge, negative charge. And the electron, of course, is the carrier of the unit negative charge. Current, then, is the flow rate of charge, the time rate of flow of quantities of charge that are being pushed by charge pressure. Resistance is the restriction of this flow, and power is the energy per unit time that it takes to, for voltage to push current through resistance. Okay? So that's <clears throat> the mutually interlocked set of relationships that's expressed by Ohm's Law. Alright, now what you're looking at there is my good current limiting top word power supply. Okay, so it's the dual power supply. This side over here we're not going to be using. I'm just going to be using this side over here. This is the voltage that it's putting out and this is the current that it's putting out. Okay, this is a current limiting power supply. I have control over the voltage and also the maximum current. So if I just take the output leads here, for example, and I simply short circuit the output leads by putting them together. You see I have some current indicated there. And now if I turn up the voltage, the current goes up of course. And this is a short circuit protected power supply, so I can't get any more voltage than 2.54 amps will go through a direct short. I can turn the limiting voltage down. say I turn it to about a third of an amp. Now if I turn the voltage up, you can see that the voltage doesn't increase because I've limited the current to a third of an amp, and through a dead short it doesn't take very much voltage to push a third of an amp through a dead short. All right. So what I'm going to do now is remove the dead short and turn the current all the way up so that the power supply will be able to deliver as much current as it's being asked for within its limits. Here's a, an automotive brake light bulb. This is an 1157 brake light bulb. And I'm just going to use one of its two filaments. And I'm going to hook it right in there, 12 volt automotive brake light bulb like that. And I'm going to put that down onto the handy fingers over here so that you can see the bulb, the voltage, and the current. Now I'm going to start turning up the voltage, which is the charge pressure to push charge through the filament. Turn it back down again. I'm going to turn it up quickly, and you'll see that the current goes up quickly, and then it comes back down. That's because, sure enough, the filament of an incandescent bulb has a pretty low resistance when it's cold, but as it warms up, the resistance increases, and so the current flowing through it for a given voltage will go down. That's a very quick temperature-associated effect, and you can see it happening there. So now I'm at 7.5 volts. and I have 1.62 amps going through that bulb, and you can see the brightness of it. And as I turn the voltage up, 
is a 12 volt nominally rated bulb, so I'll hold it at 12 volts. You can see that we have a little bit over 2 amps current now. So the current is related to the voltage by Ohm's law. The voltage is pushing charge through a resistance. So the more voltage you supply, the more current the load draws from the power supply. If I go up to 15 volts, I get a pretty bright light at two and a quarter amps. If I go down to five volts, I get about one and a third amp and a fairly dim bulb. If I let the filament cool off a little bit and then quickly heat it up, I get a surge of current and then when the filament warms up and the volt resistance goes down, or rather when the filament warms up and the resistance goes up, the current goes down for a given voltage. Okay. So once the filament of an incandescent bulb is warm, it acts just like a normal ordinary resistor. The more voltage, the more current. The less voltage, the less current. And it's simply not true that if you reduce the voltage, the current goes up for some strange reason. Because voltage is the pressure which drives current through a resistance. Okay, if you reduce the pressure and your resistance is the same, obviously the current will go down. Alright, thank you for watching.